Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Here beside me is Matt Allen, and together we are your KTAR car guys. Heard every Saturday from 11 to noon at Bumper to Bumper Radio. We're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. So if you got car questions, we've got car answers. So we encourage you to give us a call and give us a call early at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Or you can text us if you want to 411-923 if you're this shy type. As long as you're not driving, you can text. So today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, we got some fact or fiction. Of course, we're taking your phone calls. It's 602-277-5827. And text and mechanic in a bottle, Matt. Do you have any of that at your shop? It's got the the little magic genie that... (laughs) He's got to turn his mic on. I'm all messed up over here, huh? Got the little... I got the little magic genie in the bottle. You rub rub it and he comes out and what do you want? And (laughs) I mean, I wish it was that that nice. I can see how people can be confused with, with... You know, there's always somebody selling something... To you know, the quick diet, and you know, you're gonna lose 100 pounds by Thanksgiving if you need to, and all these, these other quick fixes. And you imagine walking to the auto parts store, you think you have a problem, and you look, and there's this wall, entire wall. It's like wallpaper. It's, it goes the whole length of the thing of all these additives. Or better yet, you're at the car wash. Maybe the guy wants to see if he wants some foo foo juice for the gas tank, or, or, or for the oil, or even you know, hey, at my shop we sell additives, but. Uh, so I think I strongly believe in some. Um, others are a w- complete waste of money. And and I'm talking even for fuel system, for example. There's fuel injector cleaner that's good, and there's fuel injector cleaner. You might as well just go take a lighter and set your $20 bill on fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, I some mean, of those additives will burn. You can't catch them on fire. If you need to use them for fire starter, you yeah. know. <laughs> well, the problem is you'd have to buy it to then pour it on your $20 bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So what is snake oil when it comes to automotive additives? And there is literally a plethora of those additives. And then what is actually functioning stuff? And I couldn't, when you and I went about Five years ago, we were yeah, taking yeah. pictures of all the additives down there. In some of the additives, you're going to have fuel system additives. You're going to have oil additives. You're going to have transmission additives. You're going to have power steering additives. You're going to have coolant additives. And I, I'm thinking, you know, doesn't can I just eat my vitamins? I mean, isn't there vitamins already in the oil that I put in my car? Isn't there already vitamins in the gasoline that I put in my car? Well, not really, because those are the. I mean, if you want to compare it like that, you're talking about your meal. Mm-hmm. Your meal is your fuel. Yeah, your steak and your broccoli and your rice. That's a balanced meal. But now you take your vitamins. Beer too. Beer, yes. <laughs> but then you take your vitamins. You yeah, know, you kind of they supplement maybe what you're what yeah. you're what you're eating because you're not getting everything that you need. And then that gasoline goes in all different types of cars and do all different type of cars eat the same thing. You know, we all have a little bit different chemistry. And the reason I bring that up because there is so much the need for additives has gotten real real with this gasoline direct injection. Yes. I mean, that's created all kinds of new problems. And, you know, the technology's out. The car's got more efficient, uh, way better gas mileage, better power. All that stuff happened, but a whole new set of problems and a whole new it, set of additives. It's like a lot of things. You fix one problem and you create two. <laughs> you know, <laughs> One step but, forward, two but, back. But let's break it down a little bit. And a couple of these will go together, and, and, and we'll try and spread it out in the time we have. So you have fuel system additives. So... You could have your stay bill and and things that you put in the car or in gasoline if it's going to be parked or stored for a long time. Those are good, and that's not what we're talking about, although that is one additive. Then uh, with fuel system still, we have fuel injection system cleaner where it's supposed to clean the fuel injectors. But I always say it's not necessarily the injectors that get dirty anymore. We're just using the fuel injector to deliver this cleaning solution to to the car so that we can maybe clean some carbon, remove deposits from the fuel system and and one that comes to mind is like Tecron. Yes, that's in the Chevron gasoline. QT has great gas, Costco has great gas. They all have these Tecron type um little bit of a uh, little bit in the recipe so to speak. You know, it's in there just enough to do the bare minimum. But sometimes we need a boost on that. Stuff. A little and bit of Drano. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and those are good, but you've got to use a quality product and I guess the toughest thing is how do you find a quality product? 
Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, the, the big deal was, you know, my mother would buy a new car when I was a kid, and my grandfather would come up to visit, and he would bring a bottle that Slick 50. And that bottle looked really impressive, you know, and it was like, oh, this can do all wonderful things for your engine of your car. You know, but that was one that people used for decades to find out, well, now they're getting sued because it was a lot of, a lot of uh, snake oil to it, a lot of yeah. claims that didn't really happen. So, but back to gas, I mean, there's, some of these cars are actually requiring that now. Yeah, you look at some of the Hyundais and Kias, and the, the common thing is if you if you heard the acronym GDI or direct injection and your car has that, you have a car that's suspect to some fuel system problems and, and will, tr- will parlay out a fuel system and then go into the engine oil additives. There's a number of different reasons you might want to add oils or additives to the engine. The first one that I can think of and that we actually do in the shop is we put some stuff in the oil to clean what's in there. What's happening? Maybe the old oil has gotten sludged up, and, and I'm not talking sludge where you pull the pull the dipstick out and that oil looks black necessarily, and that and there's carbon on the stick, but you can't see a lot of that build up on the on the rings and on the landings on the pistons and such, and, and that's what needs to get cleaned out. So there's that type of additive before the oil change. There's the after the oil change additive, maybe like your STP type, the really thick honey. You want to thicken up the viscosity of the oil, but then there's the additives that are just the little secret ingredients that are put in the oil, all the different detergents and additive packages and antioxidants and stabilizers, that's the you know, the second can that you put in after the oil change. Yes, it's already in the oil. And people say, Oh, if you needed that, it'd already be in the oil. Well then in the quart of oil would be twenty dollars. Yeah. So so there's there's some of those that are they're very good to use. But what are the bad ones, for example, Dave, and the transmission? And you can talk about transmission, but it's still the same scare still applies to the power steering in many cases or the engine oil you put in stop leak or an additive in the transmission. Well, the, the transmission thing gets me because people go to the auto parts store and everyone knows they'll plug into your car and tell you something that's wrong with it or give you some sort of idea. So they plug into it and they say, oh, it looks like you're having some sort of trans- transmission problem because they get a transmission type of code and they say, we've got these transmission additives. I get nervous when you're using additives to fix problems in the transmission. So they give you an additive. I've literally had people come into my shop and they said, yeah, we went to the auto parts store and they sold us an additive and we put it in our car. And I go, where's the additive? I'd like to read the bottle. It's kind of like your doctor. Well, what are you taking? He's going to say, let me see what, let me see the bottle so I can see what you're taking. And you look at the bottle and it says, you know, this is not for CVT transmissions. Well, that's exactly the transmission they have in their car. Right. But somebody at the auto parts store said, hey, here's what you should put in your car. And by doing that, they've taken a simple electric problem and they've now created a transmission problem that they didn't have before. They, so I get nervous about people pouring stuff into their cars and car manufacturers have too. So they remove the dipstick from the car. Because now they're warranting these transmissions for 100,000 miles, and you can't even find a dipstick under the hood anymore. It's a pain in the neck to fill them up. And that's what I think is one of the main reasons they did that. They, what, you think they wanted to keep people out. Yeah, they don't want people tinkering with their transmission. So people all think their transmission is this sealed piece, right. and I think that's where that came from. But it's we don't want people monkeying with our transmission that we got a warranty. And the last thing we want them doing is pouring in a bottle of transmission Slick 50. I mean, the, the best additive for the wrong reason is no good. I mean, that, that, <laughs> that's what you're saying. Because what happens, I mean, you take a transmission, for example. Maybe you've got a um, – the gasket material, let's say, is a, is a rubberized cork, okay? And maybe that got rolled or got pinched or, you know, 25,000 miles ago when it was serviced last. The transmission works great. You've got a little bit of a symptom. Maybe it doesn't work right because it's low on fluid, not because there's anything wrong with the transmission. Then you go get the expert opinion from the kid at the auto parts store. He sells you a stop leak. Well, what that stop leak does, it takes all the rubber seals and all the components and it causes them to swell just a little bit. Because if you've got a gasket out of place, it, it, but it's not going to swell the, the cork, right? Right. So all you've done now, you haven't helped the problem that you had, and you've now very potentially ruined the transmission because every other seal in there that had nothing wrong with it has just grown in size by 15%. (laughs) Right, Dave? Yes, that's that's exactly. I don't think I could have put it that well. You should come work at the transmission shop. (laughs) I don't know about that. (laughs) I'll leave the transmission expert to Tri-City Transmission. But what's the other thing? Cooling system we see. Radiators. Um, There's Again, there's additives that help the coolant. There's a surficant that helps the... the, uh, 
I think I pronounced. I think I pronounced that wrong. Yeah, but it, it uh, you know it helps the water. They call it water wetter. It just helps the water come in contact with all of the metal. You can have water flowing through the engine, and believe it or not, it's not actually touching the entire surface. So those are things to help keep the engine cool. You might have an additive to help with the uh, enhance the package of the detergents or or the additives in the cooling system. But again, stop leak, that's another nightmare, right? So there is a point here, and there's stop leak for all kinds of things, and I wish we had more time to get into it. But there is good additives for your car, and there's bad additives for your car, and a good additive misused is a bad additive. You know, it's taken like you go in and you take all these vitamins that you didn't need and you make yourself sick because you took way too much vitamin D or something. <laughs> Pee's all yellow and stinky, you know? <laughs> so. Bree's shaking her head in there, but, you know, you know the one, there's... The one additive I don't think they make is for the battery. Is there any additives for batteries? I mean, I think my grandpa told me you could, like, drop aspen in the cells or something when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I don't think there's much you can do for your battery as far as additives. The, I mean, they do sell the little things you put on top of the battery. That, but if you get a good battery, like an interstate battery, you don't need all those little additives and the things on top that help keep them clean. And they look fancy, and it's an extra little sales. So, uh, it, just make sure you've got an interstate battery in your car. Good battery, you... great warranty, coast to coast. I mean, that's why we that's why we sell them. And that's the thing is, you, you can can you get more life out of your battery by doing something? Not really. <laughs> well, you can by keeping it clean oh, and keeping sure. the area around it clean. But but yeah, there's no there's no miss no genie in the bottle for the battery. I think just good maintenance and, and starting off with a good battery. 